This next exercise is really similar to what we're going to do in lab. So a student weighs out 10.2 grams of an unknown and dissolves it in water. Uh, a change in freezing point. So this time they're giving you the delta TF. Um, sometimes they'll just give you the two temperatures, like when we're in lab, they're going to give you two temperatures. So you're going to find the difference between those two temperatures. Um, take the absolute value of the freezing point, otherwise you're going to end up with a negative molality. Even though you're subtracting that freezing point, it's going down. Um, just when you're calculating the delta TF, just make that a positive number. That difference is going to be a, a positive difference. Just take the absolute value of it. So this time they give you, they give you the delta TF. They say it's 5. And sometimes you'll have to calculate it. The unknown solute um, was a non-electrolyte, so we didn't talk about electrolytes yet. We'll get there next. So this is a non-electrolyte, and they give you the Kf for water, and they want to know what's the molality. But usually when we talk about molality, we're looking at moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. But in this problem, they give us the delta T and they give us the Kf, so we can find molality in a slightly different way, because we know this equation, right? We know that the delta Tf is equal to Kf times molality, right? So if we know Tf and we know Kf, we can solve for molality that way. We don't know what the unknown is, so we can't take these 10 grams and convert them to moles because we don't know the molar mass. We don't know what the unknown is. So we're going to have to find molality this way. So let's see. So our delta Tf is 5. So we have 5 is equal to 1.86 times molality. So we just have to divide by the 1.86 divide by 1.86 and then for your molality you get 2.688 and I'm carrying out a lot of extra sig figs there because I'm, I'm going to carry them through. So if you just wanted to stop at molality I would say that, that the molality was like 2.7 and that's again moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. You can just say little m after that that's also fine. There you go. So that's the first one. So we found the molality, and I'm going to carry this one through to the next step because I don't want to, I don't want to over round. Now, if the solution was found to a solution, the solution was found to weigh this much. Find the unknown. Find the molar mass of the unknown. So at this point, think about what's in a solution. The solution is two things, right? You have the the solute plus the solvent. That's what makes the solution. So you have those two pieces. So if you know the mass of the solute. You can figure out the mass of the solvent. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Let's let's kind of map this out and see where we're going. So we want to find the molar mass of the unknown. All right, molar mass is what? Molar mass is the grams of the unknown, grams per mole, mole of the unknown. Okay. So I know the grams of the the unknown because I, I started there, right? This is my unknown. I weighed out 10.02 grams, so I already know that part. I just need to find the moles of the solute which I can get from the molality, because what's molality? Molality is the moles of the solute over the kilograms of the solvent. So if I know molality and I know the kilograms, I can get to the moles of the solute. And if I know the moles of the solute and I know the grams of the solute, then I can get to the molar mass. So we're going to have to use the molality, which we have from part A, and the kilograms of the solvent. So I need to find the kilograms of the solvent. All they give me is the mass of the solution and the mass of the solute. Where's the mass of the solute over there? So if 90.85 is equal to the solute plus the solvent, so that's the, or the solvent plus the solute. The solute is what? It's 10.02 grams. There it is, 10.02 grams. All I have to do is subtract in order to find the mass of the solvent, so minus the 10.02. Gives us what 80.83, and that's the grams of the solvent. And to convert that to kilograms, I'm just going to divide that by a thousand. All right, so that gets me 0 0.08083 kilograms. So again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to find the moles of the solute. So I have the molality from part A, and now I have the kilograms of the solvent that I got by just subtracting the solution and the um, uh, the solvent. So now since I have the, what do I have here? I have the kilograms of the solvent and I have the molality. I'm going to multiply those together to get the moles. So my molality was 2.688 molal, right? And that's moles over kilograms. 
and then I'm going to multiply by the kilograms of the solvent, 0 0.08083, to give me the moles, which is 0.2173. And then to find the molar mass, it's just grams over moles. So I, dis I dissolved 10.02 grams in point, and I had 0.2173 moles. And so that gives us what? 46. Oops, 0.12 grams per mole. But I think we really only have like two sig figs because the Delta T was only in two, so if we were at 46 grams per mole, that's fine. All right, so just to kind of summarize what we did there. All right, in the first step, we used delta T and KF to solve for molality. Okay, because we couldn't just use our regular definition of molality, moles of, kil moles of solute or kilograms of solvent, because we couldn't convert to moles because we didn't know what kind of unknown we had. So we used this equation, we solved for the molality. Now down here, you want to find the mass of the solvent. So this is the solution. And sometimes they'll give you the mass of the solvent and the mass of the solute. Sometimes they'll give you the mass of the solution and you have to subtract. So this problem is not always set up exactly the same. You get different information. The process is pretty much the same, but the little details here might be a little bit different. The general idea is, is still the same. So in this case, you had to subtract out and find the mass of the solvent. And then we just multiplied kilograms of solvent by molality to solve for the moles. And then molar mass is just grams over moles. They give us the grams in the beginning, grams divided by moles gives us the molar mass.